Here at Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, we recognize the complexity of this season and are inviting all of us to reflect on our experience of this complicated and uncertain time. Good morning, Lillian. It's so nice to be with you again for this episode of Caring Conversations. And you have brought something really meaningful and relevant to us in this season. Last week, we, we launched a bit of a conversation about emotional exhaustion and what this season has been for us. And that, while we carry so many things, so would you walk us into what you'd like to share about caring for ourselves in the midst of emotional exhaustion? Sure. I thought our topic in episode 19, so last week, was so relevant. Um, and so for all of you who are listening in, if you have not listened to episode 19, I encourage you to do that. Um, and when we were talking, um, you presented a list of um, helpful ideas or prescriptions for mm -hmm. emotional exhaustion and depletion that we are all feeling. Um, and so I thought maybe we could take some time in the next few episodes to slow down and dissect or to open up in further conversation one or two of the uh, helpful ideas mm -hmm. how we can imagine, um, we can manage um, feeling weary and emotionally depleted. So um, today what I was hoping to talk to you about was the idea of cultivating a social network. Mm -hmm. Do that in the time of um, pandemic when we are still be trying to be socially distant. Some of us are less, and by us I mean me included, are less um, brazen and trying to still um, stay home as much as I can. I know that there are others, good friends of mine who are feeling a lot more braver and I am so happy for them and they are feeling like they can go out and be in public places um, easier. And I, I celebrate that for them. But in this season where we're kind of in this in-between transition stage, how can we manage feeling weary uh, with cultivating a social network? And last week we talked about peoples and pets. <laughs> um, and so I was thinking about that and I couldn't help think about the creation account. And you know how God creates all creatures, big and small. And then he creates Adam to rule over and take care of all the creatures. And I thought, well, isn't that the perfect setting where um, the first human is given like all of these pets basically <laughs> take care of them, uh, you know, make sure they are nourished and all of that stuff. And I thought, well, that's part of our design. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when God does that, he says, everything is good. Every step of the way, everything was good. Until he comes to, to Adam and realizes that um, man is not created to be alone. He should not be alone. And so God creates woman to be his companion and his helper. Um, and they could do the work together. They could have pets together. <laughs> and so again, just thinking about how we are created, um, that's our design um, to be in community, right? Um, to have a social network of animals <laughs> and people. Yes. Right, Lillian, I think you're so right. And if there's anything this season has done for us, it has helped us see how, oh, it is not good to live alone, to be isolated, to not have that network, which we may not have even realized how meaningful it was to us in, in building a social network. I love that when you say it, it actually makes me think of all these, um, you know, this fabric strung between us that is connecting us. So how are you approaching that? Or what would you say to all of us who are listening and as we're talking in, a, in this different time, how are you going about building a network? I think that you're right. If anything, we've realized how much more important it is to have a network. And not having a network has really been like, it feels like the floor has fallen from us. 
Um, and so what I would, I'm hoping um, to do, or I would hope for all of us to do, is first off, um, if you are not attending or a member of Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, check out your local church. Churches offer more than an opportunity for corporate worship. Um, churches really do strive for community and a place to belong. So check out the ministries that your local church offers. As for Lake Grove, and if you are in the area of Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, we have so many like numerous arenas where you can cultivate a social network. So um, I just, maybe Susan, you can help me list some of the ministries that we have that are going on even during the pandemic where people could cultivate that network. Um, so I'm thinking, for example, we have some ministry teams, uh, friendship visitors, care team connectors. Those are all teams that were established really with the purpose to reach out to others on a regular basis. Yes. You know, those, uh, I want to jump back for just a moment and say, I appreciate how much you're using the word cultivate, right? Because it, and to me, that word, it, it's like tender, tending, nurturing, because one of the realities with anything is it takes a little tending. And we do have these ministry teams that we want. So I think the invitation would be, goodness, if you are feeling like, no, I need some more social connection, we'd love to connect you with one of these ministries for someone to reach out and you can build that, you know, and then with the note that we're cultivating it. So if one thing doesn't fire quite right, let's try another hanging in there to almost like tending a sweet plant. And you might even think of your own heart like that plant or your own emotional health. Okay, I'm going to try this, put, see how it grows. Okay, we're going to try another thing. Um, so yes, you mentioned those caring teams, Lily, and there might be some other things people could get connected with at church. Granted, it is a little different. A lot of it is virtual right now as we are in this in-between, you know, of coming forward, we know that that's challenging, but what else would you invite people into? Yeah, so another virtual um, over Zoom opportunity are women's and men's Bible studies that are offered during the week, as well as a prayer team that meets um, during the week. And so those are other opportunities where you can meet with others and um, just dive into the word or dive into prayer together. And thank you for that. Um, that distinction, you know, that we are cultivating and tending to. So that means try different things. If something doesn't feel right, well, give it a little ch a chance because, I mean, to be honest, meeting virtually is not 100% comfortable for anyone. <laughs> but, um, but we can still gain a lot um, through that. So those are uh, some other opportunities, Bible studies, um, prayer team. And I think that if we are, if you find yourself in a place where you're looking for a deeper need, we also have support groups, a couple of different types of support groups that meet um, on a weekly or monthly basis. We have a grief support group um, and we have a mental health support group as well for caregivers of those who have uh, mental health challenges. Um, anything else, Susan, that I might not be thinking of? I think you you have you've got these ones that we have right now in being able to help build that social network connections. You know, I think I would invite people into one more thing, um, which of course, and maybe it's going to sound like two, which I guess it is inviting God to lead you in this, right? So that intentional prayer, Lord, lead me to which one. I know that in this season of social isolation, it can feel even harder heavy to pick up a phone or send an email or a text. However you do it, it can just feel even a little weightier. So asking for the Lord's help in that and even showing you the path that's, that's in front of you, whatever small step it might be. And then uh, invite God to show you what in your life as it is right now, what little connections might be there. Like if it's when you walk to your mailbox, do any of your neighbors happen to be out or, 
you know, if even paying deep attention, slowing yourself down, if you're going to the grocery store, any of those to just see these are chances at little connections. There may be micro ones, but uh, maybe that would help us even reaching out to some of these larger connections. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, so I think of the verse to seek first the kingdom of God. So seek God first mm -hmm. and how he is leading you. I think that is so crucial. Yes. But Lillian, I think you've given us wisdom or another way to help us with our emotional exhaustion. Um, you know, I'm kind of leading in. I'm going to ask you, would you um, pray for us and all our listeners in in this path of making the social connections now? Yeah. Sure, that would, yeah, I'd be honored to. Thank you. So let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you that you have created us and designed us so uniquely to be in community and social network with one another and with you. And that really is a reflection of our you, our triune God. Um, and so I thank you for that because it is so precious and valuable. Lord, during this time where we feel, Lord, the loss of not being connected with one another, let this be a time of sanctification where we can realize, well, just the importance of one another, both our fellow humans and our pets. We ask, Lord God, that you would guide us, that you would guide each of us to make the decisions necessary, um, maybe step out of our comfort zones, give us courage, give us also resilience because making changes and stepping out can be exhausting. But Lord, with you um, at the, um, in the driver's seat, Lord God, we know that we can find great peace and rest. So we pray, Lord God, for your guidance for each of us today. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lillian, for that encouraging prayer. Well, dear friends, as you've listened along with this caring conversation, the Lord bless you and be with you. We will, we will see or listen with you next time. Take care.